They're children. They love you. They love their mother. The relationship a baby has with its mother is quite a remarkable thing. They want to take that away. There are no two ways about it. We're under satanic attack. Children, church burnings and bombings, just the external manifestation. 500 Moms Strong, a group against Drag Queen Story Hours, and Lynn Marr, who is also a member of their group. And Lynn, I want to start with you because you brought us the video that we showed um, that was for a teen and tween event at the library near you, and we're playing it again now, Renton Library. And they also handed out condoms at that event, right? There was an event held there, built for teens and tweens. There, was vendor, there were vendor tables in the middle of the library stocked with bowl, big bowls of condoms, lube, some items that I had to have explained to me. I didn't know what these were for. This is Suicide Prevention Month, designed to raise awareness of an epidemic. Every 90 minutes, someone between the ages of 15 and 24 takes his or her life. The young woman you're about to meet tonight was 17. I want to end. What a mom says she saw in her security footage. Hodge posted that the figure looks just like her son Robbie, who died in 2016. Hodge told media outlets her son died of an accidental drug overdose. I want to end me. A new Wall Street Journal report profiles the many parents who think they can see ghosts, specters, and mysterious movements on their advanced baby monitors. That means a baby is there. Some parents describe blurry humanoid figures. Others say they see floating white orbs. The Clarks say their young daughter started acting unusual by sleepwalking. That night, my daughter, she had started sleepwalking and coming out of her room and doing this shaking thing and laughing and crying. And County managers say there were seances and sacrifices. People even climbed through crypts holding bodies to get inside. I'm broken, but I'm not hopeless. I've fallen on my knees to pray. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual. The power of Yah's word is a miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Pray before watching. Somebody's gonna have to tell the truth, and I'm gonna tell it. The enemy tried to stop us, but the Most High has just made us stronger. This is just the beginning. You gotta know the truth, cause the truth will set you free. Around the world, there's a spiritual awakening taking place. God's children are hearing His call. A call to repentance and righteousness through faith in the Messiah. The Bible says this, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you can be saved. Be a light in the midst of this darkness. Sadly, the elect are not the only ones hearing a spiritual call. The rallying battle cry of the banished cherubim is echoing throughout the earth as well. Unfortunately, many of our friends and loved ones have heard and answered the wrong call. Billie Eilish got really candid about her mental health. They've answered a call to arms that reverberates through all forms of popular media. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, and Lana Del Rey just dropped their new song and music video collab, Don't Call Me Angel. Meeting a trans woman that I was actually attracted to. And this is the condemnation. I'm gonna tell her. That light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. I'm gonna tell her. Because their deeds were evil. While we adorn our spirits in the full armor of God, I've fallen on my knees to pray. They are outfitted in the rags of the reprobate, a rebel army full of vessels fitted for destruction. Nihilism I wanna end me. and legions of the unclean 
And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. A Virginia family fends off a naked intruder claiming to be the devil. The dad grabs his gun and fires off dozens of rounds, but that didn't stop her. Taylor Cunningham spoke to the family about their traumatic experience, and just to warn you, the video is disturbing. Yeah, this family was under attack last night by a woman claiming to be the devil. She attacked this family, prompting the homeowner to fire 39 rounds. She was in to kill us. She, that was her al almighty, was to kill us. A horrific first night for the Lewis family in their brand new home. She attacked us and I held her down and just kept on punching her and punching her as hard as I possibly could. Once a dream home, it now looks like a war zone. We want to warn you at home, some of this video is graphic. Blood soaked into the carpet, walls and windows riddled with bullets, and shell casings scattered throughout. I said, who are you? She said, I need your help. Please help me. And, um... I said, get out of my house, and she said, I'm the devil. The homeowner says a naked woman with a blue ponytail broke into the basement. My name is Legion, for we are many. Around 10.30 last night, laughing and refusing to leave. She looked like she was possessed. I mean, her eyes were completely black like saucers and laughing like it was a joke. Fearing for his life, the father of three with his sleeping family upstairs grabbed his pistol, gave a verbal warning, and opened fire. He says the woman aggressively charged at him with what he calls superhuman strength. And she was not stopping. She had the strength of four grown men. When he ran out of bullets, he began throwing furniture. His wife and children jumped in, beating the woman. Yet she didn't stop until their 12-year-old son shoved a wrench into her neck. Police arrested the intruder, and she's being treated and evaluated at the hospital. As for the Lewis family, they're left with bruises and bite marks, traumatized. I'm scared to go to any room by myself. I'm just terrified. You've destroyed our family. Don't discount the fact that Satan has energized these people. They feel a spirit. It's a spirit that's doing this. They have this in common. as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They're taking your kids and they're brainwashing them, and they're turning them against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are living on the edge. All it takes is one step to kick us over the edge. It's a spirit that's doing this. What is it? Is it real? And what is it doing there? A family in Highland, Michigan believes their house is actually haunted and thinks something is harming their little girl. 7 Action News reporter Alan Campbell went to the home to see for himself. It happened here in this room as 15 month old Lily was inside her bed. Caught on camera, something walks in front of her crib, catching Lily's attention. Whatever it is, the family says it needs to go. It's almost like she sees something that we don't. It's an image Heather and Josh say is haunting their home. It was uh, chilling. It was literally a chill down your spine, like, like that what if factor. Like, is this what I just saw? Caught on the couple's nanny cam video a few weeks ago, what appears to be something moving in front of the baby crib. 
I freaked out. I stopped what I was doing and I ran upstairs and I grabbed my daughter. Heather says this so-called ghost scratched her daughter Lily and attacked her too. It scares us that it could do something else. I mean, there was even an, a morning that I woke up and I had felt like something was around my, like someone's hands were around my neck. A team of paranormal investigators came in and tried answering some of the couple's questions and concerns. Josh's father, Jim, says it may be someone who lived in this house before. The story that I was told was the gentleman that lived here originally um, committed suicide. Nihilism. I want to end me. And legions of the unclean. By jumping out this window. Uh, which is, of course, one full story down. The couple says they don't know why this so-called ghost is targeting them, but say they don't want any part of it. It's not physically just going after her, it feels like it's going after myself too. I couldn't get an explanation out of it, you know. So it's, it's freaky, <laughs> is what it is. For now, Heather and Josh say they will stay inside this place with Lily until they're able to save up enough money and move out. Reporting in Highland Township, I'm Alan Campbell, 719. Here's what's happening. They've picked up the spirit of this age and the spirit of this age will bust your family apart. I want to end me. It'll take your kids away from you. It'll turn your wife against you. It'll turn your husband against you. It'll destroy your home. And you need to get your Bible, get on your knees, and talk to the good Lord. These legions of unclean spirits are targeting the innocent and most vulnerable among us. Developing tonight, an abortion doctor who died last week leaves behind a startling discovery. More than 2,200 fetal remains were found on his property about 45 miles south of Chicago. CBS 2's Eric Cox visited the home and talked to an attorney representing the doctor's wife. Large dumpsters in the driveway, a sheriff's deputy standing watch. I'm in front of the home of the now deceased abortion doctor Ulrich Klopfer's home in Crete as an investigation into the discovery of over 2,200 fetal remains continues. 2,246, that's how many fetal remains the Will County Sheriff's Department says were found on an Illinois property belonging to abortion doctor Ulrich Klopfer. Dr. Klopfer died at the age of 79 on September 3rd. Thursday, an attorney representing Dr. Klopfer's family contacted the Will County Coroner's Office, asking them to remove the medically preserved remains. I was the one that instructed the attorneys that are handling the family's estate to report it to the coroner's office. Kevin Bolger is a criminal defense attorney representing Dr. Klopfer's wife. He tells CBS2 the family never knew about the remains until earlier this week. No one has any answers answers on why the remains were being kept or where they were stored. Uh, have you ever seen or heard of anything like this before? Never. Never. I've been doing this for over 40 years and before that I was a Chicago policeman. I thought I saw it all and obviously I didn't. Authorities say there's no evidence medical procedures were ever performed on the deceased doctor's Crete property. At one time, Dr. Klopfer had three abortion clinics in Indiana, including one in Gary. His license suspended in 2015 after accusations that he failed to report an abortion performed on a 13-year-old girl. His wife's attorney telling CBS2 loved ones are cooperating with investigators. The ongoing joke in our house was, oh, it's kind of haunted, ha, ha, ha. That was the ongoing joke at first. So when we bought it, it just had some really creepy stuff. The basement had dirt floor and cages in it. We started having issues, lights turning on and off radios turning on and off. Apparently we have multiple entities um, and actually the medium that came said that there are hundreds of people that have been tortured in our basement. I was in my daughter's room one day and it was the first time I had ever seen anything. It was a man in a black old-fashioned suit with a top hat. It started, you know, escalating. That night my daughter, she had started sleepwalking and coming out of her room and doing this shaking thing and laughing and crying and she kept saying that a red and black man was trying to lock her in her room, but mommy, I escaped. I hear her crying in her room, and I go to her room, and I'm like, Ryan, are you okay? And she was facing away from me, looking out the window, kind of with her, kind of tilt like this, back of herself. But when she turns around, she does like that, 
And I'm trying to be tough. I'm like, get back in bed. <laughs> so it was terrible, you know, and I've never felt that kind of fear in my whole life. Millions of American teenagers are anxious and depressed. Child and adolescent mental health disorders are the most common illnesses that children will experience under the age of 18. 65 percent of those with depression and 80 percent of those with anxiety do not get any treatment. It's a potentially life-threatening behavior that children, mostly young girls, are engaging in. Cutting is a form of self-harm that has been around for decades, but as I-Team investigator Adam Walsner discovered, it's growing at an alarming rate here in Tampa Bay. A twisted trend, middle school kids cutting themselves on purpose and hiding it from their parents. I felt like I had failed at something or other, so um, it was a way of like punishing myself. We'll call this 17-year-old girl Mary. She has cut herself hundreds of times over the past five years. Eventually, it just starts to feel good and become second nature. It's a high. Yeah. I had no idea about the cutting culture that actually exists with um, middle school and high school kids these days. This is Mary's mom. There were times when you're sitting there going to bed thinking, I wonder if my daughter will be alive when I get up in the morning. It's addicting, and I tried it. It didn't really help me cope, but it made me have anger to myself. Desiree is a former student at Creative Performing Media Arts Middle School in Kearney Mesa. At CPMA, there's an epidemic of children who are cutting themselves. This mother says her 12-year-old daughter started cutting at CPMA too. The main person that told me that there was an epidemic was the school counselor. She doesn't think the school is doing enough. The school district should make parents aware. Her daughter just changed schools and mom caught her reading this. It's about kids choking each other until they pass out. The choking game. It's from her daughter's new school library. Middle schoolers should not have access to books like this. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Crawling with demons. A society on the decline. These are symptoms of cultural nihilism. Nihilism is not only a worldview or state of mind, but is a spiritual condition. The Western world has embraced Darwin's theory of evolution, which teaches that the material world is all that exists that mankind is merely a byproduct of chance chemical reactions. This philosophy leads to moral relativism and the absence of absolutes. When an individual believes there's no divine creator and concludes there's no afterlife, existence becomes meaningless and lacks purpose. This leads the individual, the family, and the society to fall into nihilism. People with a nihilistic worldview are prone to cynicism, hopelessness, and depression, which is fertile ground for demonic influence and satanic oppression. Lucifer is lonely. Good evening, I'm Vanessa Van Hefty. The pastor believes they were targeted because of their strong opposition to a controversial city-run children's event called Drag Queen Storytime. 10 News reporter Rena Nakano is live. She spoke to the pastor who started out the day cleaning up this whole mess. Rena. Yeah, that's right, Vanessa. You know, I spoke to Pastor Amato Weezar this morning. He told me he is very disappointed. He told me he's not a bigot. He's all about inclusivity, and that's why he wants his voice to be heard as well. Only music filled the halls at South Bay Pentecostal Church in Chula Vista, but the walls outside sang a different tune. Sure enough, at every four corners, uh, there was graffiti on the walls of our church. Pastor Weezar quickly covered up the symbols and messages associated to Satan. He believes the church was targeted. There's no question. For the last two weeks, Weezar has been outspoken about his opposition to a city of Chula Vista library sanctioned event called Drag Queen Storytime. The Chula Vista Public Library said this is a reflection of our community. I beg to differ. He believes the event is not age appropriate, nor should it be a public taxpayer funded program. If the people wanted to uh, make that happen, to do that at a private setting, at a, at a bookstore, at a home, but not at, at the Chula Vista Public Library. Weezer says their surveillance system captured two men parking their sedan in the church parking lot at around 3 a.m. Sunday, then walking toward the building. 
15 minutes later, they're seen jumping back into the car with what looked to be spray cans in their hands. When you do something like a drag queen story hour, you are excluding a segment of the populace who, in fact, are not in favor of this, but because of what we experienced today, are scared to speak out. Despite what happened, Weezer says he won't back down. I'm very sad. I'm heartbroken. Um, but I'm going to continue to speak. 500 Moms Strong, a group against drag queen story hours, and Lynn Marr, who is also a member of their group. And Lynn, I want to start with you because you brought us the video that we showed um, that was for a teen and tween event at the library near you, and we're playing it again now, Renton Library. And they also handed out condoms at that event, right? There was an event held there built for teens and tweens. There, was vendor, there were vendor tables in the middle of the library stocked with bowl, big bowls of condoms, lube, some items that I had to have explained to me. I didn't know what these were for. Recently, my 11-year-old daughter told me about an experience she had while playing with some children at the park. She told me that one of the little girls was listening to music on her phone. When my daughter asked her what she was listening to, she told her she was listening to Bad Guy. I really, 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 really hate myself. By Billie Eilish. Deep sweet dreams sing me to sleep. Billy says all the good girls go to hell. This is the inverted upside down world where evil is good and good is evil. TV is a social engineering. We've reached the point in TV where the hero is a deviant, misfit, or weirdo. We cheer as he makes the world conform to him. We're all sad as hell. All these artists, we're sad as shit, dude. Everybody I know that's an artist, we are sad motherfuckers. In Billy's new video, she says, My Lucifer is lonely, as she beckons her youthful audience to have sympathy for the devil and befriend the fallen cherubim. In another song, Billy Ellis says, quote, For the debt I owe, gotta sell my soul, cause I can't say no, no, I can't say no, end quote. This artist fully embodies the word nihilism and her videos center around demon possession and suicide. Women today have consciences that are seared. They don't have that. They don't have that innocency about their look, about their eyes, their face, the glow that God gave a woman. Open your eyes. There's just something about that. You just don't see much of it anymore. Why don't you see it? You don't see it because their soul is, is cauterized. They're, their conscience is seared, they're, they're jaded, they, their feelings are gone. In front of a crowd of thousands of young, impressionable children, Billy proceeds to strike a contorted pose, simulating demonic possession while singing the lyrics, I want to end me, I want to end me. The crowd goes wild, repeating, I want to end me, I want to end me because they've lost it out here in this hell hole, this world, this culture in America. They don't have any respect anymore. This artist was trending on YouTube for weeks. While content having anything to do with God or the scriptures is censored, banned, and demonetized. The truth is Lucifer is not lonely. He has billions and billions of lost souls to keep him company. He was searching for souls that day at the park through Billie Eilish's music. But my daughter belongs to the Most High Yah through the blood of Christ. My dad wasn't really around. He was most of the time in jail or at bars or out partying. And my mom was in the hospital a lot. She spent most of her time you know, doing dialysis and um, 
being in the hospital for um, sometimes at months, you know, for months at, at a time. And um, we were pretty much raised from other family members and, you know, we babysitters as far as, you know, neighbors and things like that. Getting molested when my dad would bring friends, drug his drug addict friends, and we would, you know, my sisters and I would um, go through that and uh, be molested from from those friends, and um, so it was really rough for us growing up. Uh, we were put in foster care. Not too long after my mom passed away, um, and I was eight years old when she passed away and she had cancer, lupus, and uh, gangrene on, in her blood, so it, it killed her. That's when I really started having suicidal thoughts and, you know, think of all the stuff that I went through growing up and how hard it was for me and my sisters. I felt, I was angry at God because he took my mother and so, I kind of was questioning, why am I here? Why am I still on this earth? Why, why be here? There's no point in me being here. I began to really starting to hurt myself. And I would do, do things like banging my head on the, on the wall, cutting myself. I know there was a hell and I know there was a heaven when I was little um, because of my growing up in, in the church. Um, but I just didn't care at that time. It just got worse as I went into a different foster home. Um, there was more freedom there, but because there was more freedom there, um, I became very rebellious and, um, dyeing my hair, you know, dressing like a punk rocker and listening to crazy music and, you know, um, and that, knowing that even in the music, there are so many demonic things and and the transferring of spirits and um, and in, through the music. And so those thoughts became more intense and um, I was already doing drugs. I went to high school and I was introduced to more drugs. And so I, for about two years straight, I was constantly high. I really didn't care. And I had that mentality that, you know, if guy die now, I'm totally okay with it. Thoughts would come into my mind of just jumping out of a car, moving car, like on the freeway tendency to just do it and not, I was not afraid at all to do it. And um, I had no fear to take my life at all. During the time where my husband and I got into a huge argument and I had locked my husband out of the apartment. And so he came through, he broke the window in our bedroom and there's glass everywhere. We were both really you know, worked up and um, I picked up some glass and I proceeded to cut my wrist. And as much as I put pressure on my wrist, it would not, the glass would just not cut me. And it was weird because in the past I was a cutter and I have scars still on my arm from the times that I cut myself and so I knew how to do it and I never had a problem before and but for for some reason this time around I just they, it wouldn't cut it just wasn't cutting my skin and I heard a voice tell me this is not the way you're gonna die. And because I was crying out, this relief came and I just felt something come out of my body. And, and I felt like this huge weight was just lifted off my shoulders. I felt, I felt clean. I felt like clear, like my mind just cleared up. 
that completely set me free from that and putting on the mind of Christ. And, oh man. What I realized was even in the time of chaos and where everything is just falling apart, the Lord will still speak to us. Faith cometh by the word of God. Take this book, Christians, soak yourself in it, and faith will surge into your hearts. And enable us to also triumph till death. I can't sleep, how the spirit of suicide is running rapid within our country. Now, now is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Father, we speak to the spirit of suicide and we send it back to the pit of hell for where it comes from. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. They that wait upon the Lord, you promise to renew their strength. Multitudes. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. In the valley of decision. God, we silence the negative voices that want to speak negative thoughts into their ears, God. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Hear the prayer of your servant, God. In your son Jesus' name. We've been attacked. This channel's been attacked. And the Most High has used you, our viewers and supporters, to bring us through the storm and to give us victory. All praises to the Most High. Hallelujah. What did Christ say about the wheat and the tares? The separation is here. The harvest is now. You can feel it. You can see it all around you. Spiritual warfare is raging, and the only way you're going to survive is with the full armor of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We want to take this time to thank everyone who has supported Shattered Paradise on Patreon, and for all the donations we receive, the Most High is using you to keep us in the fight. And a big thank you to all those who watched our new film, Pray Before Watching the Movie, Land of Fornication. We received so many positive responses and we are so happy that the production was informative and edifying for many of you. And for those of you who are ready to learn more about many of these hidden agendas, we highly recommend you becoming a Patreon to view Pray Before Watching the Movie for a more advanced and in-depth look into the hidden strategies of the enemy. If you would like to support this channel, you could do so by becoming a Patreon supporter, making a donation via PayPal, or if you would like to send a donation through the mail, our address is Shatter Paradise, P.O. Box 91774, Pasadena, California 91109. The links are in the description below.
Thank you for your support. God bless.